In a previous video, I covered an HP Pavilion X360 laptop from 2017. This is a laptop that I didn't really have too many nice things to say about at the time, and it should have been okay on paper, but in practice, well, it's just kind of average. And there was one pretty big issue with the configuration. It shipped with a mechanical hard drive. For a Windows laptop, it doesn't take very long to see why this is a pretty big problem. The end result is that this computer was very, very slow. If this laptop had any utility today, it would be in basic tasks anyway, like web browsing or office work or something like that. And having a computer this slow was already going to ruin whatever potential it may have had. Now the logical solution, of course, is to just get a cheap SSD for it. But as you probably know by watching any of my videos, things aren't exactly logical around here. What if, instead of replacing the hard drive, we replace the operating system. You see, unsurprisingly, this was a Windows computer when it was new, but the version of Windows 10 that this computer shipped with is ancient, and considering that Windows 11 is a mess right now and Microsoft doesn't even believe it's good enough for this computer, if this machine is going to be a web browsing machine, what if it had an operating system more suited for that? Enter I can't believe I'm about to say this. Chrome OS. Before we continue, I want to make something pretty clear. I've never actually used Chrome OS before. It usually only ships on cheap and crappy hardware, and is most commonly bought by schools. They're usually referred to as Chromebooks or Chrome boxes, depending on the type of computer, and they're usually not very good. My thought process was pretty simple. If this computer sucks, why don't I make it into my own Chromebook? It's a pretty dumb idea, and I'm never going to use it, so let's do it. For today, I'm using Chrome OS Flex, which is from Google themselves, and is explicitly advertised to refresh an old PC or Mac with an up-to-date cloud-based operating system. Google also appears to be eventually canning Chrome OS in favor of an Android-based replacement, so I thought I would maybe finally install it before I couldn't anymore. With a website design that's about as terrible as Windows 11's, it seems primarily targeted towards businesses, but it is also available to any average idiot like me to install it on their own computer. Now obtaining this is kind of weird because it's so aimed towards businesses that at first you have to fill out a form, but there is a link to the Chrome OS Flex installation guide. It's fairly straightforward. You simply need two things, a USB drive and a compatible computer. Now, look, I knew it was probably a long shot, but I checked anyway. And yeah, the pavilion here isn't even on this at all. Once again, it seems like primarily business devices since my personal laptop is on here and my HP Compaq 6300 Pro is on here. But to refresh your memory, this computer has all Intel hardware. It's got a Core i3-7100U dual-core processor with Intel HD graphics. It's also got an Intel wireless card and an Intel chipset. So in theory, it should work fine. So then it's just a matter of making the USB drive. Google seems to want you to use the Chromebook recovery utility, but I haven't actually used the Chrome browser in years, but at the bottom of the webpage, they do provide an installer image. It's in the form of a .bin file, but Rufus doesn't seem to be affected by this at all. It's just that it locked the USB to MBR, wouldn't let me make it in UEFI. The computer supports legacy booting, so it's not a super big deal but it is unusual. And speaking of unusual, I wanted to point out the size of the file they provided. The image file download is a compressed zip file and it's about 1.3 gigabytes. The extracted file is almost seven gigabytes. So there's some truly insane compression going on here. But finally, it was time. At first, I didn't know if it worked because it wasn't booting, like nothing was happening. But it turns out it just doesn't have a boot screen for the first 20 or 30 seconds. So a couple minutes later, it boots up, and like with a Linux distro, there's an option to just try it off the USB, but I just decided to go ahead and fully install it on the computer. And that was 
pretty much about it. It just started installing. There were no other setup questions or anything. It wanted me to connect to the internet, but otherwise it just started installing. It notably did not tell me what device it was installing it on either or how it was going to format the hard drive. So I just kind of hoped for the best. And the strange things didn't stop there either. When I came back to the computer a bit later, I discovered it was off, like fully shut down. And given how long it took to, you know, signal it was actually doing stuff, I thought maybe somehow the install had failed, but no, it booted just fine. That was, that was it. Now for the moment, I just decided to engage guest mode, if you will, because I didn't want to sign in to a Google account and it seemed like it worked. And again, that was, that was all there was to it. The setup was extremely easy. Now I started doing some of my testing immediately, but forgive me, I should have probably seen this coming since I didn't read any of the documentation for this at all. I just kind of jumped straight in, but I quickly realized the guest experience was not even close to the full story of Chrome OS at all. The guest account, if you will, I'm going to call it that, just a bit of Windows terminology there, is extremely limited. There's basically nothing here other than Chrome and a file manager. Not even Gemini, Google's AI. And that's how I truly knew something was up. The guest account did not hold any settings at all, so the moment you rebooted the computer, it was all gone. This was particularly a problem because the display settings did not work for me out of the box with my capture card. So every time I rebooted the computer, the display would be all messed up again. So perhaps rather reluctantly, I signed in with a Google account and the experience was a lot more what I expected. Now, of course, the main point of installing this at all is going to be web browsing. So how is that experience on this machine? Well, it works with the wireless card just fine, I expected that. It was fairly quick and snappy to load, and this was reflected in the system monitor. While CPU usage was still pretty unimpressive, what was noticeable was the RAM usage, which was much, much lower than Windows. Even with a YouTube video open, this computer wasn't even using 2GB of RAM. I suppose it really helps when your entire operating system is only Chrome. Of course, having more tabs open is going to use more RAM, I mean that's fairly obvious, but switching back and forth between tabs was incredibly snappy. And in fact, pretty much opening anything on this computer was shockingly quick. At most, things took a couple seconds to load. Remember, this is all running on a mechanical hard drive, and not just any mechanical hard drive, a hard drive that I called one of the worst hard drives I've ever seen. So I already knew that any comparison against Windows was going to be brutal. So it was time to see just how brutal it was going to be. I cloned the old Windows install onto a different, arguably just as poopable hard drive. That way I could just, you know, swap them back and forth. It saved me a lot of time. As always, this is wildly unscientific. I just simply opened the stopwatch on my phone and stopped it when it seemed like the computer was ready to use, particularly when most of the hard drive thrashing subsided. This did need a password and I did screw it up a lot, so we have to take about an extra 15 to 20 seconds off of this time. So. In under 45 seconds, the computer was already on the desktop, and it took about a minute and a half for hard drive thrashing to subside. Applications also opened quick enough, I couldn't even really time it. It was pretty much instant. So, Windows technically has a bit of an advantage because it's on a technically better hard drive, but a hard drive is still a hard drive, and this was being run with Windows fast startup mode, so the computer technically more was coming out of hibernation rather than being fully boot up but of course windows is still windows <laughs> and uh this poor thing it tried its best but it took almost two and a half minutes for the desktop and taskbar to appear and as for hard drive thrashing it just never stopped i let this run for almost seven minutes and it just kept 
doing stuff. You might also be able to notice that the CPU usage and RAM usage were much higher just idling on the desktop compared to Chrome OS. This is probably a side effect of the computer being connected to the internet. It took so long I eventually just gave up and turned my camera off and this hard drive ended up sitting here chugging for more than 20 minutes doing stuff before I gave up. Disconnecting it from the internet seems to do a lot, but even still, Windows took about twice the time to boot up, and opening programs wasn't even close. Certain programs just didn't seem like they were going to open at all, it took so long. So on paper, it seems like Chrome OS is far superior to Windows. But of course, it isn't quite that simple. The first thing is that instead of being in Microsoft's ecosystem, you're in Google's ecosystem, quite literally. And I don't know that I would say that's better. The other thing too is program support, which Windows obviously clears Chrome OS here. You're basically limited to the Chrome Web Store, which obviously only works inside of Chrome Web Browser. And the second you need anything else that isn't listed here, it becomes a lot more work. There are ways from what I've seen, but it's simply not as straightforward as Windows or Linux. And speaking of which, I decided since I've had enough of Windows on here to do a far more comparable test, which was to put Chrome OS up against a Linux distro. So I installed Linux Mint on this machine, my preferred distro, to see how it performed. I've always thought of Mint as a fairly snappy operating system, but pitting it against Chrome OS, it lags behind pretty significantly by about 20 to 30 seconds in both areas. Application load time also isn't nearly as snappy as it is on Chrome OS. But of course, there are always wild cards. While Chrome OS seems to have far better resource usage than Windows, at the end of the day, it's still a cloud-based operating system with primarily web apps. And its resource usage will show that. When comparing Linux Mint to Chrome OS, it clears it easily. It also seems to be far better on storage space than Chrome OS. So personally, I would still rather install a Linux distro in this scenario, specifically because I like having a bit more flexibility with what I can do with the computer. But for a web browsing only machine, it's pretty hard to ignore how surprisingly good Chrome OS does on this computer. This computer seems to be a pretty good Chromebook, I mean, in terms of support. I haven't tested every feature of this computer, but the basics, you know, graphics, audio, internet, display, all that stuff seems to be supported just fine. Even some of the keyboard hotkeys seem to work just fine. As a basic web browsing device with a mechanical hard drive, it works pretty well. I do think it has a limited amount of appeal, but I can see the appeal. While it does have a pretty sizable user base, it doesn't compare against Windows or even Mac OS, and most of this is probably educational institutions. But I do get it. It's not exactly hard to understand why Microsoft is seemingly losing the educational business. And those customers that just want a snappy web browser based experience. For all of the issues I have with Google, I personally think that Flex is a really cool initiative. And assuming Chrome OS eventually gets replaced, I'll be interested to see what they come up with.